Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to configure the Windows 11 built-in privacy settings to your personal liking. During the Windows installation, I always uncheck a bunch of options just as a personal preference, but if you've already just absentmindedly clicked on Next when installing Windows, which most people do, and you know even if you do, they still sneak quite a few things in there, that might not be as obvious or it's not as clear unless you actually do some digging into you know the settings. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to adjust a few things that I would definitely recommend taking a look at and we're going to go ahead and jump straight into it. So most of it's going to be just by opening up the search menu and typing in privacy. Best match should come back with privacy settings. Go ahead and open this up. So right off the bat you know, if you want to allow apps to show personalized ads by using advertiser ID I turn that off. Let websites show my locally relevant content by accessing my language list. I turn that off. I turn off tracking app launches and suggested content in the settings app. I turn off all of that. And then if you want to go off to the left side here and just select privacy and security. So we selected the main stuff and then there's plenty more to go through. You know, you actually have to click back on the privacy and security to go through some more. So where it says Find My Device, if you want to allow your Windows computer to be able to track your mobile device, if you accidentally had it turned on at some point, you can toggle it on or off if it was already on. I had never set it up in my case, and you also need a Microsoft-based Windows account or to even access this feature, which I don't have. So you can adjust those settings through here. And you go down underneath Windows Permissions, so General. We already did all those options. We turned them all off in this case. And honestly, I don't really personally see a reason why you really would want to keep any of them on. Under speech, I turn off online speech recognition. User voice for apps for Microsoft's online speech recognition technology. I turn off that. You can still use the Windows speech recognition app. It just won't be able to use apps that use, just going to turn that off, you know. Uh, inking and typing personalization there. Using my typing history and handwriting patterns to create a personal dictionary. Now, I am more mixed on this one. I keep it on. You can turn it off if you choose to do so. It is tracking you, but, you know, this is one of the more optional ones we're going to go through in this tutorial today. And you can also see personal dictionary, so what it's been building on you, basically. And if there's any custom words that would show up down here, and you can clear the personal dictionary as well. And you go down to Diagnostics and Feedback, uh, Sending Required Data. You cannot send anything less than required. You have to send at least required data. So as part of using Windows, your device sends Microsoft a limited set of data that is necessary to keep your device and operating system secure, up to date, and working as expected. And where it says Send Optional Diagnostic Data, I usually turn that off. Improved inking data, we see we kept that off. Tailored experience for ads, tips, recommendations, I turn off all that. Diagnostic data, that's off. And you can also delete any diagnostic data that's currently been stored. And where it says feedback frequency, choose how often Windows asks for your feedback. I can just set that to never. It's probably a better option, frankly. So just back out of that. And going down to activity history. If you want to store your activity history on this device, so including info about websites you browse and how you use apps and services, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that. And if you want to send your activity to Microsoft, I usually would uncheck that as well. And you can clear activity history as well. Okay, going down to search permissions. Uh, safe search. So this has more to do with adult images and themes. Uh, they keep it moderate by default here. If you want to set it to strict, you can or off. You know, that's a personal preference. I keep that default. Cloud content search. Allow Windows search to provide results from apps and services that you are signed into with your Microsoft account. I turn that off and then work or school account. I turn that off. Unless you're using a work or school account or a Microsoft account, I guess then maybe you want to take another look at them. But in my case, I would just turn them both off. And history, search history on this device, no thank you. I will turn that off. You can also clear device search history by just clicking on that button. And if we go back, and I think we already did 
searching Windows? Oh, no, we have not. Uh, respect power settings when indexing. So if you have, you know, optimized, you know, battery usage, it's not going to be using too many resources when attempting to do indexing if it's set to do it on a schedule, which indexing basically just means how it organizes search results to load quicker. And you can also find my files. You don't want really to have to change any of this stuff. That's probably about it for that. And then if you go down underneath app permissions, if you want to allow apps access to your location, camera, microphone, voice activation, notifications, etc., you can go underneath all of these here. So I have my location services turned off. Now, if you're using apps like Maps or a GPS navigation tool, you may want to keep that on. You can see various apps that may want to have access to that down here. And you can do the same again for the camera app. So I usually just turn that off, especially if you don't have a camera. And if you do, you can just turn it on and then just turn them off for all of them, except for just one of the apps. So if you just want the camera app, you can turn it off for the other ones for example, so pretty straightforward. And remember, if you turn it off here, if you're using applications like Zoom or Skype, it will not work. So you will have to keep this on, but otherwise, if you don't use a camera, or if you just want to turn it on only when you're using that application, then you can just turn them all off. No problem in that. And going down to microphone, same deal. You know, I usually turn them off as well. And now we're going to be getting down to same voice activation is the same thing. Notifications, if you want to allow notifications to pop up on your screen. So notification access, I usually turn that off. And scroll down. Account information, anyone using this device can choose if their apps have access to their account info when it's on. Just turn it all off there. Again, unless you like need something, I've I really am a pretty minimalistic user myself. I don't really need many of these items. So uh, under contacts, just disable the contact list. I don't need that. Not that I ever use it. Calendar access, disable that. And you can just go down the list. I mean, you can spend all day doing this. Frankly, I mean, there's so much security stuff in here. Um, so I think you guys get the gist. I cover the big stuff here. And that's probably about it. I mean, you can, again, you can go through all these here, but you're going to get very similar results. We covered the big stuff, you know, with the location-based tracking, camera, microphone, as well as the search settings, diagnostic, and telemetry stuff. Now, there is telemetry that will not be disabled just by going through settings here that would require a much more extensive tutorial, which there are, you know, channels and websites that have made extensive tutorials on that in the past. The general issue with a lot of those is that when Windows updates again, assuming you don't have Windows Update disabled, is that when Windows updates, or especially if it does a new feature update, it'll undo or restore basically any of the telemetry stuff you disabled. And even some of the stuff that I just showed now will be reverted back in time when new updates come out. And then it's just interesting how it reverts back to default, so you're going to have to check back on this periodically. So, you know, it's kind of a never-ending thing. It's just part of maintenance of your computer. But I just thought this would be an interesting tutorial, just running through some basic settings, which, I mean, it honestly looks like it took quite a bit just to go through one page. But, you know, there's a lot of stuff, you know, that is going on in the background of your computer. And the more you know, the more you're informed, you know, the better computer user you are. So pretty straightforward process, guys. I do a lot of people to help you out. And I do look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.